Uh, the Air Corps was built around what was a growing ob and an obvious need to uh, develop solutions to the inherent liability of many uh, biologicals in development. And certainly from the transition from small molecules to large molecules, formulation, as I think many of you well know, has become a very integral part of the uh, discovery process. We've uh, grown very rapidly over the past five years. Uh, we're Cambridge-based. Uh, we've uh, focused primarily on aqueous formulations of protein, peptides, vaccines. Uh, our model, our business model, is very much working with uh, a number of major companies to uh, develop solutions uh, that can lead to licenses. Uh, we have partnerships now with about six out of the top uh, 10 pharmaceutical companies and probably about 10 out of the top 20 and built a uh, fairly large uh, uh, intellectual property portfolio of 16 patent families covering uh, both uh, predictive algorithms as well as uh, the main degradation pathways. Now what is sort of unique about what uh, we uh, have developed is really the ability to actually look across multiple degradation pathways. We started to approach formulation probably with the advantage that we were naive when we started in the formulation space. And looking at factors, equilibrium uh, base reactions, for example, that can very uh, significantly affect the stability of a protein in aqueous solution. And many of these uh, uh, led to insights which allow us actually to uh, add a, a layer of uh, knowledge on top of uh, conventional formulation science where we can actually uh, address uh, issues as broadly as uh, physical properties like uh, both reversible and irreversible aggregation as well as uh, chemical degradation, hydrolysis, uh, uh, deamidation, and so on. Uh, we are, this has actually evolved into uh, quite a complex system uh, over the past several years uh, based on the work that we've done with now somewhat uh, over 60 uh, proteins, peptides, vaccines. Uh, it really uh, begins with uh, identifying uh, different classes of proteins, uh, looking at uh, structural relationships through computer analysis, uh, and uh, building uh, algorithms, predictive algorithms, that then lead into panels of uh, uh, formulations that we can screen against. Uh, then several rounds of uh, uh, both uh, formulation, wet chemistry, uh, looking at DOE analysis and so on to refine our formulations and experimental results, which allows us then to uh, address uh, many of the most common degradation pathways that uh, can confront the formulation of biologics. So really actually relating it more specifically to, uh, to antibodies, uh, we've worked with quite a few uh, projects around antibodies. Uh, certainly antibodies themselves can, as a class, can represent uh, very important formulation challenges. Uh, probably one of the biggest areas that we deal with right now is uh, concentration and viscosity. Uh, and we uh, are actually formulating antibodies that uh, potentially could replace long, slow infusions with uh, uh, simple subcutaneous injections. Obviously many antibodies uh, have uh, hydrophobic region, regions that uh, uh, that lead to aggregation. Uh, certainly in the case of uh, antibody fragments, as we've talked earlier, many antibody fragments certainly uh, have hydrophobic regions that uh, make uh, formulation aqueous solution problematic. And uh, hydrolysis uh, and fragmentation generally, deamidation can uh, affect antibodies, but most notably in anti antibody drug conjugates, which are now emerging as a very important class of, uh, of development. Uh, where uh, linkers and so on can be hydrolyzed uh, in, uh, in aqueous solution. We currently have uh, uh, quite a few projects, uh, both with clients and in-house. Uh, currently we've got two in-house where we're formulating antibodies uh, really in the range of 100 to 150 mg per mil. But in uh, some of the uh, client projects uh, we're currently in development, uh, we've pushed that up to 200 mg per mil, and we're actually pushing further to see where the limits of our technology might be in terms of uh, formulation. We recently got a uh, biomedical, uh, biomedical catalyst grant that's going to allow us to, uh, uh, to both explore uh, the uh, uh, high concentration antibodies, and particularly a novel class of excipients, uh, but uh, to look at other degradation pathways uh, in conjunction uh, with the formulation, aqueous formulation of antibodies in high concentration. Uh, looking as 
some of the, the results we've had. Uh, we've got uh, uh, rituximab we've done uh, considerable work on. And uh, here I'm uh, showing primarily, uh, well, the, the principal readout here is, uh, is aggregation. Uh, it's measured by uh, uh, size exclusion chromatography. And uh, we've shown that uh, over a period of uh, a year that we can basically uh, minimize uh, aggregation at the 2% level where the uh, control formulation of 100 mg per mil at uh, 2 to 8 degrees has, uh, has uh, aggregated significantly. Uh, this is actually uh, stress, uh, heat stress, where we, uh, we lose the control formulation after 12 weeks. Uh, but uh, again, maintaining the, uh, uh, our own formulation at 40 degrees uh, with minimal uh, aggregation over a 24-week period. Uh, Tristuzumab is another uh, antibody that uh, we've done quite a bit of work with. Uh, here we uh, show that, uh, again, keeping the uh, over a 30-week period where we've been able to minimize the, uh, uh, the aggregation while uh, the control, uh, control formulation has uh, become uh, significantly aggregated. Now, uh, viscosity is also the, uh, uh, the other key aspect in formulation in high concentrations. Uh, uh, certainly both uh, pegylated proteins as well as uh, many of the high concentration antibody formulations. Uh, here I'm showing two examples where we've been able to very dramatically uh, reduce, reduce uh, viscosity. In the case, first case where we've been able to uh, have the uh, viscosity from uh, 11 centipoys to about 6 uh, centipoys while reducing uh, the aggregation over a four-week period at 40 degrees. Uh, even more dramatic results uh, in a project where we were able to reduce viscosity from uh, 60 uh, centipoys down to 10 uh, again while, uh, while reducing aggregation. Uh, antibody fragments, uh, as uh, has been discussed by several of the previous speakers, can present uh, particular problems uh, with uh, significant uh, aggregation due to uh, interaction of nonpolar regions. Uh, we've developed a, a class of, of uh, uh, amphiphilic species that have shown to be very highly effective in actually uh, masking the uh, hydrophobicity and uh, for the aggregation of these uh, uh, of these regions, and uh, this now we're applying to a range, not just of uh, antibodies, but to uh, hydrophobic peptides and proteins and so on, where uh, uh, hydrophobic uh, interactions and so on are problematic in aqueous solution. Uh, this is just an example of a, a single chain antibody that we did uh, a couple of years ago where, uh, again, we were allowed, we basically were constrained uh, in the design space, uh, particularly in terms of uh, pH, but we were able to very significantly reduce uh, the aggregation of these uh, antibody fragments uh, and actually at, at high temperatures at uh, 40 degrees. Uh, antibody drug conjugates, uh, again, many, uh, as I mentioned earlier, are subject to hydrolysis. Uh, as these emerge as a uh, important uh, therapeutic uh, uh, class of, uh, of molecules and so on, the, uh, the ability to actually apply our tools to uh, minimize uh, hydrolytic cleavage can be uh, quite central in uh, development of molecules that are actually going to be able to progress as development candidates. <coughs> Of uh, this, again, we've been able to minimize our hydrolysis while at the same time uh, minimizing other uh, critical quality attributes in, in development. Uh, this is an example of a drug conjugate uh, which uh, shows both the uh, uh, both uh, aggregation and, uh, and hydrolytic cleavage where uh, in both cases uh, we've been able to uh, uh, show that we can uh, maintain, even at stress temperatures, a uh, uh, very uh, favorable uh, profile for, uh, for the molecules. So, uh, just summarizing, uh, I, I think what, uh, again, what I'd like to leave you with is uh, the, uh, the view that uh, Agricol, Agricor has a, a unique capability. We don't have any uh, a magic ingredient, but we have a set of tools that can uh, address multiple degradation pathways that can be critical in uh, both the uh, development of drugs as, as well as uh, coming up with new dosage forms of existing molecules. 
Uh, we've built our success uh, with uh, experience with over uh, 60 uh, uh, formulations of uh, protein, uh, proteins, peptides, and vaccines, uh, and uh, including uh, quite a few successful client projects, which have now moved into uh, licensing with major pharmaceutical companies. And we hope that Aristat will be uh, the uh, technology of choice as we uh, enable a new generation of uh, antibodies and other, uh, other biologicals. So thank you very much. I'm happy to take questions.